Celeb Savant is a career retrospective type interview focusing on singers, actors and industry experts. Join Barrett Edelstein now as he dives into the entertainment world. South African Zena is a singer, presenter and songwriter. In 2021, Zena signed her first record and publishing deal with David Gresham Records. In 2022, Zena made her mark in the music industry by releasing a six-track EP. And over the past few years, she has been actively performing across Europe and South Africa, gaining recognition for a captivating stage presence and powerful vocals. In 2002, she had the opportunity to be a part of DGR's Sisonke Creator Tour to Amsterdam. This tour gave Zena the opportunity to attend the Amsterdam dance event, participating in BMG songwriting sessions and performing at showcase events. It was during her time in Amsterdam that Zena found inspiration and wrote her latest EP, Tulipa, which was released at the end of 2023. With the heavyweights in the industry taking notice, Zena's on an upward trajectory with her music career. Up next on Celebs Bunch, we've got Zena. Where do we find you in the world and how are you doing? First of all, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be on the podcast. And where can you find me in the world? Do you want to know where I live? <laughs> well, you, so you're based in Johannesburg, hey? Yes, I'm, ba- yeah, I'm based in Johannesburg, yes. South Africa. Okay, yes. lovely. Um, yeah, and my journey started at a very young age. Um, I was seven years old when I chose to, you know, sing for the rest of my life. And I guess, you know, now approaching 28, it'll be exactly 21 years. Yeah. <laughs> what was the thing at seven years, which was like, okay, this is what I, what I want to do. So something that you did at in a production at school, seeing something on television. What was that? So it's funny because prior to that actual day, um, I had done like a modeling contest at school. And so I had my hair done and had an outfit and everything. It was incredible. And then as I got onto the stage, I saw people (laughs) and I kind of took like two steps forward. And then when I saw everyone, I was like, I'm not doing this. So I turned around and just like left. (laughs) And then um, in December, that very same year, my parents had gotten me this um, Barbie microphone and guitar set. Mm. And so my brother and I basically like put on a show for my gran um, on Christmas Day. And I think that was the point where I was like, okay, cool. This is so much fun. And if I can make this a job and like do this, I'd be having fun while being paid to do it. So essentially that was the idea um, in the beginning. What was the thing at school? Did you start learning instruments? How did you make it a goal to allow it to become your job? Sure. So I did a lot of the major productions at school, all of the concerts. I did all of the auditions for the dancing and the singing and the yeah. acting. And um, it was always my my place to feel, um, you know, kind of comfortable and confident because I wasn't confident in generally in the, like a, the school setup and stuff like that. I was actually quite a shy person, but as soon as I got comfortable in a specific place or with specific people, then I felt like, okay, cool. I can be myself here. So that happened throughout primary school and high school. Again, all of the major productions, all of the, um, you know, the dance contests and everything. And then when I was 16, I started going to um, the Christian School of the Arts. So I did musical theater full time while I was doing, you know, um, my ITCSE, so Cambridge course. So it was quite a full day because we pretty much start at seven in the morning and you'd start with, you know, either a ballet class, um, or you would start with a warm up class and stuff, and then you know head over to your musical theater theory class and your singing class, and then you'd go into your academics. So it was trying to balance both, which I think really helped me as a person because I was able to balance, you know, putting on my academic hat and then putting on my creative hat. So mm. it then you know blossomed, and then in 2015, after I'd finished um my matric year, um I then you know started going into the industry full time through Stage Race Performing Arts School. So, and then what were the next steps? <laughs> How did we get to where we are now? <laughs> sure. Okay. So 2015, I auditioned for um, the ABBA tribute show. Oh, um, yes. And so I was a backing vocalist for that. And then I went on to, from that in 2016, I then went on to doing the Whitney Houston tribute show as a backing vocalist. Okay, and that's so where pause, I pause, toured. Pause. So how yes. long were you in the ABBA show and how long were you in the Whitney Houston show? And was the Whitney Houston one with Belinda Davids? 
That's the one, yes. Okay, okay. so, so how it's long with that you, company. How long were you with each of them? So that's Showtime Australia, correct? Yes, Showtime Australia. Yeah. So the other show, we, because we had auditioned, I think, in November ish. And the, I think, was it October? Yeah, I think it was October. And the show, I think, started end of November, beginning of December. Mm. So all of December into January, the shows took place. And then while I was doing ABBA, um, the, 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 I think he still, you know, owns the company. Johnny was yes. um, offered me to, you know, do the um, auditions for, or rather to join the Whitney Houston tribute show. So I went with them to Europe. I went to Germany, England, Ireland, Scotland, oh, wow. Wales for the year. So it was so much fun. And I think being a 21 year old or mm. 20 year, actually 20 year old at the time, um, it was a huge experience. Like I'd never left the country before. I'd never left South Africa before I left for the Whitney Houston tribute show. So it was me seeing the world for the first time and doing that through singing was absolutely incredible. It was also very hard because obviously we're singing Whitney songs and, um, yeah. you know, Whitney has an incredible, voice range and she's an incredible musician so mm. and also belinda on top of that she yeah. is absolutely amazing so you know um i learned a lot from her learned a lot um about travel as well just being in different countries but also learned you know about working hard as a musician and being diligent and disciplined and then um i decided to come back to south africa because i was offered to you know carry on touring with them for a while but i really wanted to get started with my career so i yep. thought you know what um i don't want to you know commit just yet i want to use all of this extra money that i've got and actually start building my own career here at home because essentially that was the plan so i came back home and started studying uh, musical theater and performing arts through trinity college london and then started releasing music and writing songs and you know putting all my stuff out there and so as that journey continued, there's been a lot of opportunities because I then joined this karaoke kind of pop group called The Buzz. And we had all sorts of performances in like the, at the Nickelodeon Festival. We performed at the Microsoft 10 launch. Um, we performed on TV, on Yo! TV. So there was a lot of experiences that came with that. But I knew that with being in a group, as fun as it was, I knew that I wanted to be a solo artist mm. um, because I had the, the whole Beyonce concept in my mind. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to be a, a mini Beyonce say so that was um you know what was in my mind and then you know the journey continued and as soon as i um released my first single um and had that put to radio called um ever been that's when you know things started to unfold and so you know going on to radio and being playlisted started happening and then my music video was playlisted on trace so then um that kind of you know put me out in the world a little bit um, and then I released another um, song the year later. So that was 2019. 2020, I released Satisfied and then COVID happened. Oh, yeah. Um, and we yeah. weren't and satisfied, then, um, I'm just saying. <laughs> we, we were not satisfied with COVID <laughs> at all. Um, which, you know, COVID, I won't lie, because I was still teaching part-time and teaching online, which Wait, really did help. What? So there was... I was teaching musical theater and performing arts. Oh, okay, okay. Um, so it did it, it did give me a bit of income, and I was still at home living with my parents. So um, I had the privilege of being able to, you know, get some sort of income at the time. But I think at that point, because things in my music career kind of like completely slowed down, and there was no, um, you know, build up of where I was going to next, um, I kind of thought, okay, cool, you know, maybe this is all I get and this is the experience that I'm afforded and that's okay. That's enough for me. Mm. Um, so I thought, okay, maybe this is the end of it, you know? And so I was like, okay, great. But I kind of had, um, you know, set my eyes out on being signed to a label because I knew that would help me a lot in building myself as an artist, you know, having more advice and more opportunities and just, you know, having the right people to put me in those specific rooms or mention me in the rooms where I cannot go into. So after that, I kind of sent an email out to the David Gresham record group and I said, Hey, um, it would be so great to meet with all of you. Um, this is my profile. This is what I've done. Um, I wasn't really looking for anything. I kind of just wanted advice because I was hoping someone would help me and, yeah. you know, just being able to move forward in the, in the music industry. Um, and so, but at that point when I had sent the email, I was like, okay, like it's, I don't think it's going to happen. So I, left it. It was at the back of my mind and I started the year 2021 and I was like, okay, cool. Um, I'll find a job. I'll probably teach again or do something. And then that's just going to be my life. So in January, it was January the 26th or 7th. 
I got an email from the David Gresham Record Group and they asked to see me in person. How long after no sending the email did you get the response? So I sent the email in November. I got the response in January. Okay, so like yeah, so three months sort of ish. Yeah. Three months, three months, yeah. Um, but so I also when, understood that. Sorry to interrupt. So the fact that you hadn't heard, did you think, okay, they're not going to respond? Or did you have a thing in your mind, okay, I'm going to follow up? Or did you just leave it to the universe? What, what was going on? I thought, I thought, okay, they must have seen my email and maybe just think that I'm not, you know, an as an experienced artist. So I was like, oh, it's okay. Like, whatever. If they do respond, they do. If they don't, it's absolutely fine. Like, I'm, I don't, I didn't think that I was, you know, well up at that point. I knew that there was, you know, still far away for me to go. Although mm. I thought I was quite an established artist and I knew what I was doing. And, yep. um, but in hindsight, I was like, oh, you know, I've only released like, one or two songs so it's not really something big it's just that I've had you know experience with emceeing at you know events and stuff like that and you know having a lot of performing experience I thought you know maybe this might be something yeah um so then I get an email from them in January of 2021 and they asked to meet with me so I called my dad and I said look we've got a very big meeting so please will you come with me because I know as an artist when you hear stuff you kind of just take it and you're like, oh my gosh, great, we can go with this. And you never get into like the nitty gritty and stuff yeah. like that. So I had to bring my dad, who was my manager at the time. Um, and so we went over to the, you know, the meeting with the company and so we were chatting just about me and my journey and what I've done. And they were telling me about the company and the artists that they have. And then at some point, you know, the now MD, Andrew said, okay, cool. So we're really keen to sign you. And I kid you not, I did not hear anything else after that line was said to me. I heard absolutely nothing because wait, I think so in my mind, I had. Was this when you met to... with them? Was this when you met? Yes, with... this was. When... Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. This was when I met with them. Yeah. So in my mind, the idea of being signed, I mean, obviously anybody wants to be signed, but in yeah. my mind, it was like, look, I'm still a very small artist. There's nothing, you know, big about me yet. And no one's, you know, running to see who Zena is. So I understand if I don't, but when he did mention that they wanted to sign me, I was gobsmacked. I was like, is this happening? Is someone playing a trick on me? Is this a prank? Mm. Um, and then the journey began. And so I released my first single with the company called Good, which went to number one on Jack Randa FM. And then Ooh, after that, it was yeah. just like a ripple effect. Yeah, so it was my first number one. And then I released my EP Rose Garden in 2022, um, which, you know, I in hindsight, I guess it did okay. Um, not essentially to the standard that I would have liked it to, but there was definitely, you know, a mark that was made and kind of put my name out there into the world. And then, um, yeah, so fast forward to 2023, um, I then released my first debut album called To Libra after having been to Amsterdam in 2022 to go and write with some artists and producers up there. And yeah, um, I must say it I guess it all sounds like everything has been, you know, treading upwards, which it, which it has been, but there have been, you know, some downs, but yeah, very grateful to be where I am today. Okay. So uh, a few things. First of all, mm -hmm. did you get signed? So when he said they want to sign you, did they sign like then that same meeting or was it a whole process before that happened? No, of course there was a process. So we had, we got the contracts and I had to look through them with my dad and now yep. the lawyer that we had. Um, and then obviously, you know, come back and say, okay, cool. These are some of the questions that we have. Can we change this? Can we change that? So it was a bit of a process and it took about, because we, I actually signed, it was, was it on my, it was day before my birthday when I had the last meeting with them before I got signed. Okay. Um, yes. Yes, I got signed on the 24th of February and my birthday okay. is the 23rd. So, yeah, so um, it was a very nice birthday present and very <laughs> exciting time um, because it just felt like, you know what, for the first time I, I can actually, you know, have a, a scope of what my career could potentially look like now having a team behind me that's supporting, you know, the goals and, you know, wanting to be in the industry full time. The karaoke band, I'm, I'm going a bit uh, back and forward because there were questions that were triggered in my mind. The karaoke sure. band buzz that you mentioned. Did you yes, guys the buzz? The buzz. Did you guys sing covers or originals? We sang covers. We oh, sang okay. a lot of covers. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry. Okay. Mm. You mentioned that your first EP didn't do as good as you thought or uh, expectation. Why did you have an expectation? What was what was the thing that allowed you to create that? If that makes sense. 
uh, to create the expectation. Yes. You know, as a as a person who has, you know, a lot of goals and is ambitious in life, yeah. um, I think you do have ideas of, okay, cool. Hopefully this will put me on this level so that I can okay. do this. And then when I do that, I can be able to do that. And so <laughs> I was so, playing yes. the, um, yeah, so I was playing the, okay, cool. The steps to getting to be a successful musician mm. and full-time musician at that, which is very difficult um, because obviously this industry is very up and down. So you could be having a great you know, run where you're booking all the festivals and all that kind of stuff. And all of the music is being playlisted on all of the radio stations and, you know, it continues to grow. But I think in my mind, um, I knew that there were stepping stones and that, you know, this was the beginning. However, because of, you know, having a label and, yeah. you know, being a new artist with like mm. new music and being a different type of artist, you know, I thought, okay, cool. I think there's a, there's a space for me. Um, but then I quickly realized that it doesn't necessarily work like that. Mm. Uh, but not only does it not work like that, but I don't know. It's just, I guess you make a song and if people enjoy it, they enjoy it. If they don't, they don't. And there's no, there is kind of like a formula to getting to being playlisted and, you know, being put on radio stations and stuff like that. But there is no formula to you becoming a sensation. Um, so that was, it was difficult to come to terms with because I, I really thought that I'd made, you know, the right strides and the right decisions and, you know, made sure that the music that I put out there was really good um, and well-written. And so it was quite disappointing, I guess, because, well, not disappointing because I wasn't happy with, you know, what I put out, yes. but I think because of the expectation again of, yes. okay, cool, if I've worked this hard and I've made these decisions, surely, you know, surely. I'd be in a different place. Yeah. You're giving me so much aha stuff because it's, yes, we've got stepping stones and maybe, uh, not maybe, definitely because you had that. I had an experience last year. Basically, the, my podcast was a nom a nominated as one of the top five entertainment podcasts on the African continent. And when it came to the wow. evening, when it came to the evening of the awards, uh, it was um, a virtual presentation. But everyone around the table was like, you're going to win, you're going to win, you're definitely going to win. And I'd done so much work and so much work. And then I didn't win. And then they won for theirs. So I was trying not to be disappointed because I want to be happy for them. Sure. But at the same time, yeah. they were telling me I was going to win and that they weren't going to win. So it created this whole thing in my brain as well. But it, as you speaking now has really helped me solidify my mind and I experience to understand, cool, we are on our way, but we just had to go to a little few smaller steps <laughs> before we got mm -hmm. to that big one, <laughs> if that makes sense. Hundred mm -hmm. percent, no, hundred yeah. percent. I do, I do believe now more than ever that all of these strides that I've been making are necessary. And although it's played a lot on my mental health, mm. I'm grateful for the growth and the constant. You know, it's not to say, well, for me, I sometimes it does feel like a person plateaus at some point, and you just kind of there's nothing more. I mean, my biggest line for last year was. was there's nothing more that I can do that will make people listen to my music. And so when I got to that point, I kind of was like, okay, cool. It's out of my control anyways. So no matter how much work I put in or how much time I put in, at the end of the day, the outcome is based on how other people receive it. And I don't have control over that, which yes. is difficult. Yes. But at the same time, um, it, it kind of, it is freeing, but for a person who's low-key a control freak, <laughs> it's damaging because yeah. it's just like, okay, what more can I do, you know? And sometimes, the, okay, so I'm very much in a proponent of the law of attraction. You know, what you put out there, mm -hmm. what you think you create, etc., etc., what, et cetera, you, receive, et what yeah. you receive. So sometimes, and I'm the same as you, very much in the mm -hmm. sense that, okay, what what more can I do? What more can I do? And I've realized over time, and you again helping me in this moment, that sometimes just by doing nothing will allow the universe to take it and let it do what it needs to do. So we need to exactly. step out of its way sometimes. And I know for, yeah. I know for me, it's challenging. So I understand, mm -hmm. <laughs> I understand where you're coming from. Absolutely. What is the difference? Uh, I know that having a label behind you elevates you in different ways, but what's the difference mm -hmm. between being independent and being part of a label and how much does a label have in the input of what you release? Sure. So how I like to see it is a label is 
is is the company that invests in you as an artist. Mm. And so the investment will be studio time because as a as an independent artist, studio time is expensive. Producers <laughs> yes. are expensive. Um, you know, and you know, then there's the because there's not only that, there's a lot of things that go into releasing music. So you start off with the producers and the writing of the music. Okay, great. And thank goodness I'm also a writer. So um it was it, it's it, it's it's easy, you know, to write a song. So, anyways, so it's the producer, it's the studio time. Now, then you go into the mixing and the mastering of the song. All right, now the song is done. That's not where it stops. Now it's the cover art. What is the cover art going to look like? Okay, great. Now you have to get a, a graphic designer on board, you know, to design the cover mm. art. Um. And then, then it's the, okay, cool. Now we want to get it to radio stations. So obviously being as an independent artist, I'd have to outsource a, um, a publicist who's going to be, who has the contacts at the radio stations, um, to do that for me on my behalf. But in a label, it's inside, um, it's, it's what's it? It's in house. Okay. So that's all provided for you. You know what I mean? And the photo shoots and the music videos and the, you know, the, the live performances online. And, you know, it, it, the, the label, I think opens up more opportunities, um, you know, to have the help financially from a financial perspective, but also from a context perspective, because they have more of a network in mm. terms of, you know, obviously, you know, being able to give their, the, their artist music to different radio stations because they've built relationships with them. Whereas, you know, if when you're an independent artist and you're starting out, you are building those relationships. So before you even get playlists that you're building relationships first, and then, you know, depending on if the relationships work well or whatever the collaboration is, you then get playlisted according to, I don't know, maybe that. Um, so it's, 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 it's twofold because there's a lot more freedom, obviously, in being an independent artist and just making your own decisions and when you want to release and how you want to release. Um, but then with the label, it's, it's more curated and more like planned, yes. which I kind of appreciate more because you kind of then give the opportunity for, um, for me, for God, to, you know, you do the work and for things to actually happen in yep. the, um, you know, with the song and everything like that. Because what I find for me was that when I've written a song, I just want to release it. Like I don't want to hold on to it because it just annoys me to have a song in the back of my mind that no one else can listen to except me. Um, I always like to share my music because I really do believe that um, if I've been through something, I'm sure someone else has been through something either similar or different, but has the same, you know, feelings towards what they've been through. So um, I guess it's in a way to share light and love and healing in a sense. And so for me, music has become um, an outlet. And so if I, and, and I'm bad at communication, I, I'm horrible at communicating how I feel. So music was the only way for me to, you know, be able to express that part of myself. And so when I'm not able to write music and not able to express myself, I find myself in a bit of a rut um, okay. because then all of my emotions are sitting up here and I just go insane. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned uh, writing a song is easy for you. Zena's creative brain, what motivates it? What invigorates it from three to zero to three to four minutes? What is that uh, journey in creating music? You've already mentioned it. It's easy. Is it always easy? Mm -hmm. Let's unpack how you create yeah. a song. So it's either a melody, a feeling or a moment. Um, so, or a word. So four things. Um, because most of the time, like if, like on a, on a, and I use all of my daily, you know, experiences as a, as a means to, you know, kind of speak to what I'm singing about. So love is one of the things that, um, has been very prominent in my music. Um, and growing up, I had a non-existent love life. Um, and so I always used to write about what it would be like when I was in love and what it would be like when I did meet someone or if I did have a crush and wasn't, you know, reciprocated, mm. I'd write about, you know, the horrible, um, experience of, you know, not being unrequited love. Um, and then when I did fall in love and I did have that experience, it just, unravel the world of different feelings that I was able to put in. I can write many more love songs about, you know, <laughs> the experiences that I've had. Um, 
And then there's also feeling like, you know, when you're sad and you're feeling not good enough, you're not feeling great about yourself, or there's a situation that happened where someone might have said something that hurt your feelings, um, right about that. Um, a moment, maybe, um, you know, I went out with some friends, you know, saw a cute boy or something like that, said something stupid, um, that becomes a song of its own, um, or a, um, a moment. Did I say moment already? Or did yes, I say yeah. feeling? Yeah. You yes. Say sweet, yeah. Um, Yes, and then a moment um, is just something that happens that changes your life or just a word. Sometimes I've written a song based off of one word, like, for example, um, good intention or two words, rather, um, or good, like my single. Yes. Um, and that comes out into song. So the process of creativity for me is if I hear a melody or something that I like, for example, in a movie, I'll watch a movie and I'll hear a certain melody, like of a, you know, instrumental piece that's playing behind a certain yes, scene. Yes, yes. And I'll take, you know, little... Um, um, increments from there and I'm like okay cool how can I put these melodies together differently without copying the song specifically and make a song so that's how I come together with music when you listen to music whether it's your own or by other artists are mm. you able to relax and enjoy it or is your technical creative brain unpacking what you're listening to it's so funny because for the first time I listened to a song um I'm listening to it just to listen to it. Okay. And wh what's nice is that, well, for my songs, it's completely different, obviously. Yeah. But when I listen to other artists, there's a, there's a sense of, you know, peace and in being like, oh my gosh, this is a great piece of work. And then I have this weird thing in my brain where, um, when I hear a song and I love the song, I play it at least 10 times in a row and I sit with my phone on either Apple Music or Spotify and I learn the words verbatim. Okay. Um, and then once I've learned the words, I literally keep listening to the song and then I start hearing different things like, oh my gosh, the bass in that song is so much more um, prevalent now and this melody, oh my gosh, I didn't hear that the first time or oh my gosh, how did he write that line? And I start like dissecting it, but I don't dissect it to you know, think about how I'm going to like write a yes. song. Like I say it because it's the journey of, I'm trying to get into the artist's brain. Like what was, what was she thinking when she wrote that? And when she sang that and where did she get that from? And so it just becomes like a, I feel like I get lost in music and in such a beautiful way. Cause it, it, it feels like maths for me, you know, like a, a scientist when he figures out like a code or whatever, or um, <laughs> a, a, what's it, a, a, sci a scientific expression. You're like, oh my goodness, this makes so much sense. That's how I feel with music. Yeah, yeah. But with my music specifically, when I listen back to it, I'm always very critical yeah. um, as we are all with anything that we, you know, love so much. So I kind of like nitpick a little bit and I'm like, I should have done this and I should have done that. Oh, I should have actually sang that better. But then sometimes I listen to my music and I'm just like, gosh, Zina, but you're an incredible writer. Gosh, <laughs> but Zina, you're so amazing. Um, and I always like I'm flabbergasted at myself because I'm just like, how did you do that? And where did that come from? Um, and so that that's the, the beauty or the circle of, you yeah. know, being an artist and being a creative is that you go through these moments where you're like, oh, I wish I'd done that differently. But then you go back again later and you're like, oh, but this is such a great song. You know what I mean? So it's that constant cycle. I love this game. I know if I had to ask you this question in two years, two minutes, five minutes, five years, I know your answer will be different every time. I recognize that and mm -hmm. I understand that because there mm -hmm. are millions of them. I'm not saying favorite. I'm saying yeah. if you had to push play to five songs by other artists once we finish this conversation, what would those five songs be in Bahu? Okay, right now, Yes And by Ariana Grande. There's a song by a uh, song called Basement by Jack James. He's incredible. Um, I, I can't say the word because it's a swear word, but it's S H I T covered in gold by uh, Mac Ayers. Um, Hear your soul, go baby, and um, down by Zena. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, I love it, I love it. Something to add to my list, brilliant. We've got all these plans and extensions, so just a couple more questions. So, what are the sh short pl short term plans coming up for this coming year? Well, so um, we're going to be releasing another single from my album. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to that one going to radio because it's going to, I feel like it's a different version of myself. I feel like each song has a different version of mm. me. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes in terms of plans. I'd like to perform a lot more. So, um, especially at festivals, like I saw how Hey Neighbor and, um, 
Rocking the Daisies was so amazing. And I saw how much you enjoyed it as well. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm looking to, you know, be able to have more performances. I think that is something that I'm missing in my career and would love to really, you know, do a lot more of. Um, yeah, but I don't, I don't really have plans this year because a lot of the time, every single year, I have a plan of what I'm going to do, how many songs I'm going to release. And for the first time, I've just been like, okay, I need to let, the universe do what it needs to do there you know um, i need to let god do what he needs to do and so that's that's my plan for this year is letting everything that i've put out now come back and however that is um i'm ready to you know receive it however it comes and i think that's the most difficult part is you know yeah. when you've put music out there you're expecting a certain response but i think i'm at the point now where there's nothing more that i can do and can yeah. control so it needs to happen the way it's supposed to yeah. i love that and that also alleviates some of the expectation you know that, mm-hmm, that hanging mm-hmm, on and mm-hmm. expectation brilliant so mm-hmm. the podcast is listened to throughout the world as a final message what would you like to say i would like to say to people that you are the best version of yourself um when you do the things that make you happy and when you are kind to yourself and so be kind to yourself at whatever age you are and if you feel like you're missing something no that's the world telling you that you should be in a place where that that has nothing to do with you so do what makes you happy um be kind to people and be compassionate towards yourself and yeah work hard also thank you for listening to this episode of celeb savant Please follow Barrett on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook at Celeb Savant. That's C-E-L-E-B-S-A-V-A-N-T.